Welcome to the Alabama A&M Football Review. Highlights, features, and analysis with head coach Connell Maynard. Brought to you by Protective Life, Union Chapel Missionary Baptist Church, and University Kia. Good evening and welcome to the Alabama A&M Football Review with head coach Connell Maynard. Coach Maynard, your team lived up to all the billing in the 12th annual Lewis Cruz Classic, defeating, and I mean defeating, Lane Dragons 51-13. to Yes, sir, the guys played well. You know, um, we, got off, we got off to a fast start, uh, 14 to zip, um, and it looked like the game could get out of hand. Next thing you know, Lane made a play. We actually busted coverage um, and made it 14-7, to and then we kind of just uh, didn't play very well in the second quarter. Uh, you got to take hats off the lane. They played well. Um, they was they they played hard. They they was trying to beat us, and uh, we didn't execute very well on offense. And uh, and they were just pounding us on defense. And so, went in the half, man. They was actually up in stats, you know, total yards. But we had the most important stat. We had the lead. So when I told the guys, we just got to settle down on offense and quit shooting ourselves in the foot. Continue to make plays defensively. Uh, they was playing good. We gave her that one bust. Uh, for the long touchdown. Um, so we got to go out and play Bulldog football the second half and play the way we're supposed to play, and that's what we did. And we executed very at a high level in the uh, third and fourth quarter. Uh, I wish we could have did it for four quarters. We did it for three. And uh, that's, that's the next level. We got, we got to got to play every quarter. We got to play every series, every down. And, uh, and, but at the end of the day, it was, it was a great day and great day for the Bulldogs. The Lewis Cruz Classic celebrates the great coach, Lewis Cruz, who made his bones in the Southern Intercollegiate Athletic Conference coach, the SIAC, who we played last night. This is the original helmet from back in the 70s. We thank you, Nathaniel Jackson, for his donation. Coach, when you think about what Coach Cruz was able to do, being a stellar athlete and then coaching student athletes to do the same thing, what are the obstacles to doing that these days? Well, you know, back in the day, uh, uh, Coach Cruz, when he first started coaching at Alcorn, uh, Alcorn, he uh, coached running backs and he coached women's basketball. And then he came to A&M and he coached football and baseball and coached us to the first baseball championship, too, in 72. Uh, and that was the first football championship in 72. But he also had the first baseball championship. So uh, back in those days, the coaches coached a lot of sports. Um, you know, you had to coach two or three sports uh, as a head coach. Nowadays, it's not like that. You know, you, you coach football or you coach soccer or you coach basketball or you coach baseball. Um, but, you know, you take hats off to him because he had to be a great athlete and, and a great coach to know the games, the different games, to be able to be a head football and a head baseball coach. Now, before we get the telephone calls, Coach is speaking to the baseball championship for Coach Cruz. Coach Cruz's undefeated team went down to the Orange Blossom Classic. They said they took two buses. Coach, you take four. We would say that's progress, right? Yeah, we probably they probably didn't dress as many people as, as we did also. Plus, uh, you know, if we got a long drive, we, we want everybody to have one seat by themselves. You know, those guys got to play a football game, uh, a lot of wear and tear on their body, pounding, they tired. You can't have two big old grown men sitting up beside each other in a little old bus on the way back on a six-hour trip. So uh, make sure everybody get a seat by themselves. What is the difference, you would say, Coach, from student athletes when you play, then when you watch your father and his generation versus the generation today? Uh, they just a little different. You know, we're a little, little tougher. We're a little tougher. You know, um, you know, Coach say run through the wall, you say which one. You know, and uh, nowadays you say uh, get on the bus, they say why. You know, so uh, just a little different. But, um, you know, you got to change with the times. You got to manage and uh, find a way. Coach, you found a way of the quarterback situation. Xavier Langford started 15 of 19, 131 yards, two touchdowns, one interception. Coach, most would say that's, those are pedestrian numbers nowadays with quarterback play. But what do you call it? I call it efficient. 
I call it uh, taking what the defense give you, doing your job, um, running the team. You know, uh, his one interception came off a batted pass from the defense alignment, and a uh, defense alignment intercepted it that was on the ground. So, <laughs> I mean, that was like a fluke play. Right. And uh, so Xavier played well. He also ran the ball a couple of times in some crucial situations. Uh, he executed, did what he had to do. I mean, when you got a running back to rush for 191 yards, that's all you're asking the quarterback to do. We're not asking him to throw for 350 yards, 400 yards. We're not letting him throw the ball 48 times like some quarterbacks do. And you're 35 for 48, and you, oh, he threw it 350 yards. Okay, he threw the ball 48 times. Okay, Xavier threw it 18, completed 14, 140 yards, whatever it was. That's what we asked him to do. That's what he did. That's what it's about. It's about balance. And we had a balanced game yesterday. That chime means this is the end of the first period here on the Alabama A&M Football Review. When we come back, we will show you the highlights from the first half. And, man, they're just a couple. But just wait until the second half. That's your teaser. So come on back and watch the Alabama A&M Football Review with head coach Kyle Maynard. Engineering and science usually look like this. But our students build race cars from the ground up, explore wind tunnels, particle accelerators, and crystal growth. Our studies in cybersecurity and rocket propulsion have tech companies like Google and SpaceX recruiting at Alabama A&M University with one of the highest percentages of women STEM graduates in the country. Alabama A&M University. Start here. Go anywhere. Don't get hit hard by low trade offers. Get up to $5,000 over Kelly Blue Book Fair Market Value for any trade at University Kia. Check out our large selection of new Kias. University Kia proudly supports Alabama A&M University football. Go Bulldogs! Union Chapel Missionary Baptist Church. A church with a big heart of love. Located at 315 Winchester Road in Huntsville, Alabama. Under the leadership of Dr. O. Wendell Davis, the worship services begin at 7.45 a.m. and 10.45 a.m. every Sunday. Now, we pray that you are blessed by our worship experience. In golf, if you make a mistake, there is a mulligan. Well, in God, if you make a mistake, there is mercy. Aren't you glad God has mercy for your mistakes? Hello, I am P.T., Pastor Troy. I want to invite you to come and worship with us at the Fellowship of Faith, where Jesus is exalted and the Word is explained. We love Alabama a &M. Go Bulldogs! Companies hunger for our food scientists. Here, a new generation manages our cities of tomorrow. The discovery of hardier plants, healthier animals, is growing at our research station, Alabama A&M University, where new designs and ideas are put to the test. Be a researcher in our labs, or a forestry fire dog in our fields. Alabama A&M University. Start here, go anywhere. Welcome back to the Alabama A&M Football Review with head coach Connell Maynard. 
Our student athletes appreciate you watching and so do we. Coach, after we looked at the first half highlights, you come out of the gate again with a opening drive score. But coach, we have some mishaps in the first half and really kept the score at 14 to seven. How do you overcome that in the second half? Well, just execute. Like you said, we had two turnovers. Uh, we kind of shot ourselves in the foot and we had that one fluke interception. So uh, we knew if we just settled down, continue to execute, uh, we can move the ball uh, at will. Uh, and so the second half we did, we settled down and the offense was clicking and the defense stepped it up again. Also in the second half, only giving up six points. Um, had a blocked field goal, extra point, took it back for two points, had two interceptions, really three. One got called back because of personal foul, uh, roughing the quarterback. Uh, so everybody really stepped it up the second half, and, uh, you know, I gave him a little bit of pep talk at halftime. Which would be unusual because I've been in the locker room at halftime with you, Coach. You're not the one to come in screaming and hollering about what you need to do. I'm sure that conversation was way different than I've seen. Yeah, it was a little different, a little different, you know. Uh, home opener, and uh, just to be honest with you, I, I really let them know that, you know, you can't live off last week. You know, everybody tell you how good you played against Vanderbilt and how good you look and how good we're going to be, and you go out there and lay an egg. You can't live off that. You can't live off the first quarter. You can't live off the halftime. You can't live off last week, whether it's good or bad. You got to go out and do it again every week. Mm. And so uh, those guys uh, bought in and, and uh, played very well in the second half. The intensity coach that you pulled up in the second half, I guess that can best be exemplified by the rushing attack for the Bulldogs. You ended up the game, I believe, with more yards than Lane did rushing the football, but Lane gave you something to look at to practice with, with their ability to go up and down the field with their running game. Yeah, they ran the ball well, especially the first half. Um, I think they had 120 uh, some yards rushing in the first half, uh, and they had 220 yards total offense in the first half. So, uh, but. Again, in the second half, uh, our guys bowed their backs, stepped it up, and uh, put a lot more pressure on them. Uh, but, you know, that's why you play the games. And uh, we know what we need to work on, and we get to work on those things and, and be ready to go Saturday. What is fascinating about this team, Coach, is that we look at the two deep chart. The names on the two deep did not match the names in the stats column, if you will, because Amari Pate gets two interceptions in the ball game. Marvin Smith is your leading tackler in the ball game. Talk about the development of your student athletes and by your staff coaching them up. Yeah, um, Pate is actually a, a first year guy for us and uh, he's been playing well. He, he's, he made a play in uh, one of our scrimmage games uh, in the end zone. He went, came from over the top and it was a DB and a receiver. He went up over both of them and took the ball away from him and tried to run it back, but the guy just clipped his leg. Uh, so he's been playing well uh, all season, and uh, he, he made a big play yesterday. Uh, Marvin Smith, leading tackler, uh, he was here. He's been here in the program. Uh, both of those guys are starters, and uh, both of them play well, and we, we look for them to continue playing that way. Terrell Gardner gets a punt return for a touchdown. Coach, tell me about that one, because I looked at you on the sideline, and you like, go! <laughs> yeah, it's unbelievable, Ted. Um, we we did return punts, probably the first three or four punts they punted, and we didn't get a lot out of it. You know, he didn't have a lot of good punts to give us an opportunity for some returns. Right. He, I had, he had a couple that we had opportunity to return, but we didn't, we didn't return them for touchdowns. We got a couple yards, but on the punt return, we actually went safe. We kept the defense on the field. We took, the, we took paid out, put trail in, and he took it back to the house. <laughs> so. It's, it's football, man. That's why you play. Find a way. Find a way. That's what winners do. That's what fathers do. Find a way. Terrell found a way to get to the end zone with the safe and the defensive guys out there. And Coach Pearl, D-line coach, talking about, oh, Coach, it's because the defense line was out there. <laughs> <laughs> he actually got a good block. Gardner, who overcame his muff punt earlier in the ball game to turn it over, and he gets you a touchdown. What does that say about someone's resilience to keep playing after making a mistake? That's, that's what I was talking about earlier, you know. You can't live off the first quarter. If you score a touchdown, you throw an interception, you fumble, you miss a tackle, you drop a pass, you got to keep playing. You got to play the next series, you got to play the next quarter, you got to play the next half, you got to play the next week. And so Terrell did that. He muffed the punt, caused us a turnover, and uh, he never got down, kept his head up, knowing that we're going to need him later on in the football game, and he came through. Coach, your special teams unit, who we featured during the radio pregame show, 
your special teams unit coach, how many balls did we see go into the end zone on touchbacks on kickoffs? That is something new, coach, and it's, it's a sigh of relief because we would score and then you give up a long kickoff return. Now you don't have to worry about the return because Mal- Mal is hitting the ball all the way to the end zone. He is, and I think he kicked them all in but one. But one. And I think he's, the guy ran one back from like one the yard goal, deep. Yeah, yes. So he's kicking it in, in the end zone, through the end zone. He did it against Vandy. He did it this week. Uh, uh, it's a great weapon to have mm-hmm. because, as you say, you get them to start uh, at the 25-yard line. And, you know, last year we couldn't get it in the end zone and people run it back or we try to sky it and they run it back to the 40 or the 50 and now the defense playing on the short field. Mm-hmm. And so now people got to drive the field on our defense. And if you got to drive the field on our defense consistently, you're probably not going to be able to do that. And so it gives a lot better chance. And uh, – uh, yeah, we, we're, very, we're very pleased with how he's kicking the football. Well, you score 51 points in the game, folks. You get a chance to see other student-athletes on the field. Coach, you played three quarterbacks last night. Yeah, we played three quarterbacks. Uh, you know, we wanted to get X out of there once we thought the game was in control. Mm-hmm. Um, and we, we got, we got um, yeah. Morrow out right. and uh, played a couple other running backs. So we, we want to get those starters out of there when we think the game's out of hand because – we got to get ready for conference play. We want those guys to be healthy. We're not trying to score 100 points. Mm. And or, got half a dollar though. Or or, <laughs> or run up the score. We we want to we want to get our get other guys in there to practice every day too. That's right. Get those guys a chance to execute and, and perform and and show what they got. Coach, let's talk about the conference opener going down to Baton Rouge to play Southern, who came up short yesterday. Jackson State avenged their loss from the week before. The Southwestern Athletic Conference is the most competitive conference in the football championship subdivision. Next week, we get on the plane and go down to Baton Rouge, Coach. What's going to be your major concern? Uh, uh, everything, man. They got a good football <laughs> team. They got a good football <laughs> team. Uh, they got some big old linemen. Uh, Coach Dooley keeps some suits, too, doesn't he? Uh, yeah, Coach Dooley got a couple of suits. Uh, <laughs> I'm pretty sure you have another one on for us. Uh, but... You know, Southern's always been a good team, hard that's to beat, right. especially at home. Uh, that's one of the hardest places to go in and win. Uh, and they just lost there this week. So uh, you're talking about Southern losing two back-to-back home games. That's probably not heard of or been done a lot. Mm. And, and so uh, we got our hands full. Uh, but, again, we got to take care of, of A&M. We take care of A&M on the offense and defensive side, special team size. Uh, we'll be fine. But they got a very good program, offense, defense, special teams. They're going to be hungry. They backs up against the wall. They got two losses, mm. one in the conference. I don't know if Jackson game was a conference game. I don't think it was. So they got one loss in the conference. So now they know they have to win out. They backs against the wall. So we're going to get their best shot. We'll be prepared. We'll be ready. Coach, that's something interesting you just brought up. On the conference schedule, all of our conference games that we play count. On some of the schedules, they don't. What's behind that? Well, if you play more than eight conference games, one of them can't be a conference game. So if you play more than eight, teams that's in our conference. One of them has to be a non-conference game. So, like, we just played two non-conference games, right? If we'd have scheduled Alcorn, it would have been a non-conference game. Mm. Or, How do they or, pick that? Or PV. How do they pick that? They say your you, first one's not a conference game, or is it random? No, no, no. You got the schedule. You got the schedule from the league, and then you got three empty spots for your, right. that you fill in. So, if you fill one of those in with another conference team, it's a non-conference game. And that's all up to you? Yeah, that's up to us and them. They got to accept it. Or they ask us, then we got accepted. Interesting. Yeah. All right, so something else about the Eastern Division. FAMU played well yesterday, but they were out of conference. Looking down the schedule, as fans are prone to do, so this is truly a fan question. What has to happen for the Bulldogs to continue with this winning streak? Uh, We just have to take care of ourselves. You know, we can't turn the football over. We take care of the football, continue to be balanced on offense, um, and defensively continue to get after the quarterback. Uh, make people drive long fields. Uh, special teams continue doing what we're doing, kicking the ball in the end zone, re- getting good returns, giving offense short fields. That's all it is. It's not, it's not rocket science. You know, we just got to play good, solid football. Don't, don't kill ourselves. And, of course, the Bulldogs will be journeying to Baton Rouge. When we come back, we'll give you some details on the game and some other things that you can look forward to here on the Hill live right here on the Alabama a and Football Review with head coach Connell Maynard. Darrow brings new energy to the power plant. Julian's accounting is by the numbers. 
They're student interns from the College of Business and Public Affairs at Alabama A&M University, where marketing class connects with the community and companies come to recruit. So while Kyle strengthens his managerial skills, he's earning a business degree and experience at Alabama A&M University. Start here, go anywhere. Don't get hit hard by low trade offers. Get up to $5,000 over Kelly Blue Book fair market value for any trade at University Kia. Check out our large selection of new Kias. University Kia proudly supports Alabama A&M University football. Go Bulldogs! Hello, I'm Pastor Troy. The game of football is a lot like the game of life. You have to tackle your problems and block your fears. I just want you to know there is victory in Jesus. I want to invite you to worship with us at one of our anointed services at our Huntsville campus or our Madison campus. At the Fellowship of Faith, Jesus is exalted and the word is explained. We love Alabama A&M. Go Bulldogs! <laughs> Parker is 29 and learning to communicate again. The students teaching him earn a degree with 100% job placement, but the real reward is changing a life. At Alabama A&M, it's a university where agencies actually go to recruit compassionate students who help themselves by helping others. Service is sovereignty at Alabama A&M University. Start here, go anywhere. Hello, I'm Pastor Troy. The game of football is a lot like the game of life. You have to tackle your problems and block your fears. I just want you to know there is victory in Jesus. I want to invite you to worship with us at one of our anointed services at our Huntsville campus or our Madison campus. At the Fellowship of Faith, Jesus is exalted and the word is explained. We love Alabama A&M. Go Bulldogs! <laughs> Don't get hit hard by low trade offers. Get up to $5,000 over Kelly Blue Book fair market value for any trade at University Kia. Check out our large selection of new Kias. University Kia proudly supports Alabama A&M University football. Go Bulldogs! Engineering and science usually look like this, but our students build race cars from the ground up, explore wind tunnels, particle accelerators, and crystal growth. Our studies in cybersecurity and rocket propulsion have tech companies like Google and SpaceX recruiting at Alabama A&M University with one of the highest percentages of women STEM graduates in the country. Alabama A&M University. Start here. Go anywhere. Parker is 29 and learning to communicate again. The students teaching him earn a degree with 100% job placement. But the real reward is changing a life. At Alabama A&M, it's a university where agencies actually go to recruit compassionate students who help themselves by helping others. Service is sovereignty at Alabama A&M University. Start here. Go anywhere. Welcome back to the Alabama A&M Football Review with head coach Kyle L. Maynard. 
Next Saturday, 6 o'clock p.m., the Bulldogs will be taking on Southern Jaguars down in Baton Rouge. The pregame show may be heard on 90.9 FM WJB starting at 5.30. Coach, the big news of the weekend was the SIAC defeated a team in the SWAC. Miles beat Alabama State yesterday. We were playing Lane out of the same conference. Respect all, fear none, huh? Yeah, you know, uh, one of my mottos is respect all, fear none. Uh, you know, they put their pants on just like we do. You respect them, but you don't fear them, and you go out and you play hard as you can. Uh, you got to play every game like it's a championship game. Uh, but I think, you know, Miles played us very – I mean, um, Lane played us tough the first half, and it was a, uh, you know, one-possession game. But the, the difference is nowadays, you know, we don't recruit the high schools like we used to because of the portal. And – it's a lot of good football players in high school that normally would get a FCS scholarship that's not getting them now. So now they got to go D2. So DT getting, D2s are getting all that talent, and plus you still got the portal. Okay, so now we got all the FCS, FCS players going in the portal. Only 27% of them get a scholarship, right? So now you still got 72% uh, in the portal. And so they're not getting the FC off, FCS offer, so now they got to go D2. So now D2 got all the good high school players and they're getting all the good FCS players that's transferring that's not getting other offers. And so now they got a good team. And so that's why they're able to play with us and, and compete with us and then sometimes slip up and beat you. So you, you got to take those guys seriously. Not saying that they didn't, but those teams, the D2 teams got a lot of talent now and they can play, they can play with us. Sometimes, Coach, people say that what you see on film is a little different when you see it live. Could that be a case as well? Well, you know, film never, I mean, seeing it live to see how, how, how somebody hustles, how, how they play, how they react. Uh, the film only show you the play. Mm. You know, but what is he doing on the sideline after he make a mistake? You know, when adversity strikes, how do you react? Are okay. they over there fighting? Mm. Or, or is he over there saying, I'm good? I'm good. I know I made a mistake. I ain't going to do it again. And we got your back. Let's go get them. You know, uh, offense turn the ball over. Defense, oh, man, dang, they always turn the ball over. And then they go out there and they get scored on. Or the offense turn the ball over. Defense, hey, we got your back. We're going to go out here and get a three and out. Okay? You can see that live. You can't see that on tape. Mm, that would be the difference. But you will be able to see the Bulldogs live. The game against Southern will be on ESPN+. Plus. But we know you want to hear it on 90.9 FM WJAB. So, Coach Maynard, give us a final word. Go Bulldogs. And uh, thank everybody for coming out this week, supporting the Lewis Cruz Classic. It was a, it was a tremendous success. And uh, way to wear your maroon. It was great. It was great looking up in that crowd and seeing a whole bunch of maroon. Thanks for cheering us on. We needed, we needed a little shot in the arm coming out of halftime, and y'all gave it to us. Thank you all for watching the Alabama a and Football Review. With head coach, Connell Maynard. Good night. Bulldog fans, thank you for joining us today for the Alabama A&M University Football Review. Bulldog faithful, we encourage your support and participation. Until next time, go Bulldogs!